Welcome adventurers. Today we're going to be making sci-fi shipping containers out of cardboard, mostly. I started with the idea that stuff in space has to get there and just like today I use shipping containers. Now I want to make sure that this template I'm about to make is very square. So I square off the edges that I'm going to be using with a carpenter square. Spend a little time to determine that I want the overall height to be about two and a half inches. So I marked that out on my cardboard. This is the medium density chipboard that Wylock is very fond of. I then decided I want to make it about six inches wide. So I marked that off as well. And of course I'm going to come in about a half inch from each corner the top portion so that I can give it kind of an angular look. Then we're going to cut all that out and end up with a template just like that. Now with this template we can use it over and over again to transfer the shape onto other material, in this case foam core. So I'm going to use a regular pencil and scribe out the sides until I get several copies on here and then I'm going to cut them out line it up with a good straight edge and cut out the individuals then cut off the corners and now we have a stack of the inserts that are going to give the overall shape to this build now I need to determine how big the strap the cardboard pieces are they're gonna make the bulk of it so I did measure this as 17 millimeters on the corner five inches at the top and two inches on the side so now I'm gonna cut out a ton of cardboard to make that out. ultimately I'm gonna make four of these and here's the dimensions in case you want to build the same thing here I was laying out to see how big I wanted to make them I figured some 5 inch from each end and then 10 inch from each end so you have like the normal size ones today that are double sized and regular sized I guess or half sized and regular sized here we're hog all the various pieces together making sure that they're nice and square and of course for the 10 inch ones you're going to find the middle to put your middle support in for the base I'm going to, because I'm not perfect, scribe around each one and cut it to fit. Now I've got these little gaps and unfinished edges that I want to cover and I toyed with the idea of using cardboard and EVA foam and settled on construction paper. Cut it three centimeters wide and in the middle made a crease. Here's my first attempt at making a crease. Make it look pretty good once it's glued down. But I figured out to batch these quickly, if I use the dull side of my X-Acto knife, I can scribe a line on these that gives me a nice place where it will bend very easily and consistently each time. Now that I have figured out the trim, I'm going to lay some out. And using the scissors, I'm going to cut from one side to the halfway point where the seam is that I uh, just scribed in there. And the reason for that is so when I bend this around the corners, I can notch out these little sections so that they match up joinerally, if that's even a word, very nicely, which you'll see here. Just like that. And of course, you can use a mechanical pencil to mark it off to make sure you have guidelines to cut off. A little watered down PVA. You can use regular. Elmer's glue, undiluted, you can use tacky glue, whatever you'd like. I just chose to use watered down. Here I'm laying off pieces, marking them with a pencil, and then just cutting them with the uh, exacto knife to the length I need and gluing them into place. Very approachable craft here. It's not very complicated. It's cutting cardboard for the most part and paper and then gluing it together. I know it's not very exciting yet. But I think they learn. Uh, they turn out really well in the end. But again, watered down PVA, or in my case, Eileen's tacky glue, and uh, stick it in place. And just repeat that, you know, 500 times. And there you go. 
you have semi-finished cargo containers. Now let's make the sides more interesting. We need some sort of door and I decided to go a little bit smaller but copy the same shape. Now we need some sort of mechanical end because these are space sci-fi containers so they need to be able to hook up the stuff and look spacey and have greebles and such on them. So I determined that a roughly one and a half inch by three inch panel for the mechanical section and I just dropped the overall dimension of my end piece by an inch in each direction. And then I marked in a or a five millimeters from the edge and I'm going to cut that out. And then the intersection that I cut out, I'm going to reduce it by another five millimeters so that I create two borders. Just like this. Now these pieces right here, I'm going to use as templates so I can quickly cut out the next ones so I don't have to do all the measuring and all that. But then, again with the tacky glue, a little bit of water, glue it into place, glue the center part into place, repeat that for the other three, and make sure they're weighed down so that they dry flat. Now for the back panel, for the uh, like control panel or whatever for these cargo containers, I did the same thing with that one and a half inch by three inch piece with the corners cut off at about a quarter inch. I cut those out of some, this is more like packing cardboard or uh, cereal cardboard. It's kind of you get off of packaging material with crackers or whatnot. So I cut out four of those, four little squares that are all the same size, a few drops of super glue to hold them in the place. Once so I align that anyway. I'm not a perfectionist, but there are moments when, goodness, I take forever to do things. So a little super glue. Cut off a little greebly cardboard L looking thing that I did three times, four times here. Put those into place. A uh, little cardboard rhombozoids, rhomboids. Little gear button to cut off pieces of a. Uh, round wooden dowel to give just a little bit of texture to this end. These are the very basic greebles I made for this and figured out my layout. And I just repeated that four times. Then glue those into place just like we did the other end. The door end, now the mechanical end. So a little watered down glue, spread it out, stick it on. And of course weight it to make sure it dries properly so it's not all bubbled up and warped. Once it was all dried I hit it with some black paint and Mod Podge mixed together so everything was glued together and a little waterproof. And I wanted to add a little detail to these now very plain looking boxes. So I took some average measurements from the gaps in between all of my rails there and used those to make a kind of an average size template. It's sort of an X cross beam sort of design here. You can make yours whatever you want, but I came at about a half inch from each corner, made a little box, and then a half or a quarter inch from that, drew lines across, and then filled it in so you could see it better honestly, and began trimming out the pieces that I didn't want. In other words, everything that wasn't marked in black Sharpie. When I was done, I had four neat little baseball diamonds. Now I'm going to transfer this shape onto some EVA foam. I also made some smaller kind of bow tie looking inserts to go into the side panels. These X's are going to go on the roof. Which I will also trace onto EVA foam here in just a moment. And again, I tend to butt up my uh, cookie cutters here so that way I can get the most out of my foam. And now that it's all traced out, I cut it out. EVA foam is very easy to cut with scissors, and that's exactly what I use here because it's quick, fast, good pair of sharp shears, and you can go right through in nice, straight, full cuts. 
Now that those are cut out, apply some straight tacky glue to them. Not watered down this time. I want to make sure they're held really strongly. And since they're not as porous as cardboard, I want to give it as much surface area to glue to as possible. So do that with the tops of all four of the cargo caner, containers. And I put these little bow tie looking things on the side. Eventually, just like that. Now it's got a little bit more surface area, a little bit more interesting texture. So let's prime them and Zenith all highlight them, just like that. Now cargo containers come in a variety of colors. I chose some at random. Orange, blue, red, and green are the colors I went for. Uh, if you look around, look up cargo containers or Connex, C-O-N-N-E-X containers, you'll see they come in a rainbow of colors. Look at any shipping container. Then we dry brush all the edges with a lighter version of the same base color paint. In this case, a kind of a off yellow. I found that popped a little bit more than just the water or the diluted down orange paint with white paint in it. It's amazing how dry brushing just brings out so much of the little detail that was lost up to that point. So it's the orange one, the green one. A blue one. And the red one. And of course with the red one I just use a little pink paint for my dry brushing. It's definitely a dried out looking version of red. Now we're going to paint all the little greebly bits. Black for the grate. I use kind of a white and lime color for those buttons or level indicators gray for the control wheel and metallic silver for the two uh, round dowels. Now cargo containers are generally marked by manufacturers or whatnot so I'm going to use some stencils here using the cutting mat to keep them aligned and with a little white paint and a torn off piece of sponge I'm going to stipple on the paint to give it a chipped and weathering effect. Here I'm going to take some water transfer decals. I got the transfer decal paper from Amazon, found some images I like from some free to use websites out there, and made some graffiti because what's a Connex without a little graffiti on it, right? You soak those in water and then they slide right off, like you see here. These aren't as delicate as the ones you get with actual model kits, so they're a little, a little more forgiving when you're messing with them. Push them around with wet paintbrush, like you saw there, and then of course, black wash. Now let's rust it up. Put on some black splotches and then switch to a reddish brown paint using the torn sponge and fill out almost to the edge. Then tan almost to the edge to the, of the reddish brown and then just little dabbles of yellow and orange here and there. And of course I use my red oil wash or my rust oil wash to enhance the rust effect. Now I'm looking at this and I'm not entirely happy with the wash effect. So I'm going to make a black wash or use a black wash I've made and go to town. I'm going to paint it all over and while it's still wet using a paper towel here dab off a lot of the excess but not all I'm making sure to avoid going into the recesses and then I let it dry. I did that with all four of them actually. I may never go back to regular washes again. The oil wash was amazing in the long run. So now let's take a look at the uh, finished product. I think they turned out pretty amazing. And because they're lightweight, they're easy to stack and carry. They're pretty tough because it's just cardboard and foam core. And ultimately, I'm going to use these same stencils or templates I made to make some playable interior ones. 
and structures. Well, I hope you enjoyed all this. Thank you for watching. Now go have an adventure in crafting. <laughs>